So we are now going to move to the live cases. Can I ask the rest of the panel to come up and take their places? Dr. Gambir, we can see you. Can you hear us? Uh, I'm Dr. Gambir. Can yeah, you I can hear us? Uh, M is that uh, MS Hiramath? We can hear you. Yeah, I you. can hear you very well. Okay. Okay. So I go ahead with the, uh, my team and then go with my case. I have with me uh, Dr. Sudha, who is a consultant in interventional cardiology. We have a senior staff nurse. Uh, she's standing on the right hand side. And we have a technician on the machine. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of assistant staff at my back. Now, let me introduce the case to you. Can I have the first slide, please? Uh, this gentleman is 68 years. Uh, he is a known hypertensive, in fact, grade 2 hypertension, dyslipidemia, and he is an ex-smoker, retired from army. He came to us with uh, symptoms of angina and exertion for the last 4 to 5 weeks. Occasionally, he was also having rest angina, and in addition, he also had dyspnea on exertion. The ECG showed, can I have the ECG please? The ECG shows as you can see here, left ventricular hypertrophy with the full PR interval or first degree AV block. And there is a T wave inversion in lead 1 AVL, deep T wave inversion V4 to V6. Can you go back to the previous slide? Yeah. Uh, echo was done which showed a concentric left ventricular hypertrophy with the ejection fraction of 60% and no regional wall motion abnormality. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, this was his coronary angiographic finding. The coronary angiogram was done about four days ago. A left main was normal. We'll, be sh we'll be soon showing you the uh, live uh, coronaries. Uh, the left main was normal, and LED had approximate to mid 50 to 85 percent long stenosis. The distal LED uh, appeared to be normal. The D1 uh, is a medium sized vessel with a 99% stenosis after its origin. LCX OM was a long diffuse disease, including the significant stenosis at the origin of uh, obtuse marginal branch. Ramus was bifurcating into two branches, and uh, they were by and large free of any significant disease. RC had 40 to 50% stenosis, and uh, RV branch had 70-80% uh, stenosis. So, in nutshell, he had a three vessel disease. Uh, now, can we show his angiogram, which is a pre-recorded angiogram? Because that will also show you the right coronary angiogram. Now, this was the angiogram done about uh, four days ago. Uh, I'm sure uh, people in the panel can see this angiogram. Okay, next view. You can see here that there is a uh, significant snow. It is extending uh, just beyond the septal branches. There are two large septal branches. Then there is a big uh, diagonal branch which is bifurcating into two. The diagonal has got a 99% stenosis. And in fact, the disease in the diagonal starts from uh, its origin. Can you go to the next loop, please? This is the LAO caudal, which shows you. Uh, that there is a disease in the circumflex and also a significant stenosis at the origin of the obtuse marginal one branch. Next. Uh, this shows it uh, better, the LCX OM and then uh, a long diffuse in the LCX OM. Ramus bifurcating into two but no significant stenosis. Next. Show us the RCA please. Next. This is the RCA, big size RCA. Uh, well, there is a lot of plaques in the RCA. Run it. In the mid RCA, you can see about 40% stenosis. Next. And in the RA view, next, you will see that there is a uh, significant stenosis in the RV branch, which is a fairly big size branch. So, that's what was the pre recorded angiogram. But let's show you what we have recorded today. Can we go on to now? Yeah. Can you see, please, uh, people on the panel? Uh, yeah, this is much better, actually. 
This is the angiogram done today. Yeah. Uh, MS, uh, you can see that there is a, a tight stenosis in the diagonal, 99 percent. Yes. With PME one flow. Yeah, it's uh, almost to almost occluded the diagonal. Uh, we can and see a bit of diagonal, which is uh, at the origin looks occluded. okay. Yeah. And can we full see the full screen uh, for a moment? We'll show you further that the origin is also having a disease in fact. Yeah. Because uh, I feel that this diagonal is diseased right from its origin because the distal vessel is fairly big size. The, then the LAD uh, disease starts uh, proximal to the diagonal branch but the significant stenosis is after the origin of the diagonal branch. Okay, go on to the next. Uh, next, we take several shots. This is what uh, shows best the uh, lesion in the obtuse marginal branch. The significant stenosis at the origin of the obtuse marginal branch. Next. Okay, next. Now then, uh, we started the procedure here. Of course, uh, you can see a wire uh, in the LCX because the guiding was directed more towards the LCX and the wire, uh, it took us about half a minute to get the wire into the LED. We uh, passed a whisper wire in the diagonal, backed up by 1.25 mm balloon, we crossed the lesion. Next, dilated with a 1.25 and then uh, with a 2 mm balloon. And then we put a wire in the LED. You can see that there is a wire in the LED. Next. Next. And now you see the uh, big size diagonal branch which is bifurcating into two. And it is a, it is a, in fact diffusely disease diagonal also. The LED uh, is, is also, also uh, having a tight stenosis and this stenosis now seems to be extending beyond the septal branches. Next. So in order to do a IVOS, we thought well, let's first dilate this lesion with a 2 millimeter balloon, which we did. Uh, go to the next, so we dilated with a 2 millimeter balloon and then put in the IVOS. So this is uh, IVOS next. Can I show you uh, the IVOS pictures? We took a pull back from the distal most LED onto the left main. Okay. What do you say about diagonal? Looks okay. Looks good, yes. Now this is 7th French. This is 7th French extra backup. And now you see the position of the LED stent looks fairly good. We are much proximal to the uh, point where the lesion is starting and we are much distal to the point where the lesion is ending. Okay. Is it agreeable to you, MS? Should I go ahead with the LED stent? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Down. Now you see the uh, stent has taken the curvatures of the LED very well. That's the beauty of the Promus element stent. I think the other good thing about Promus element under these kind of setting is going to be the radio opacity. Uh, I think amongst the uh, uh, high-end stents, uh, it yeah, perhaps that's the that's most that's radio opaque stent. And uh, yeah. in bifurcation situation, you can yeah, yeah. position it very well. There's no doubt that that helps a lot the operator in, in deciding about, yeah. Let's take a shot here. Dr. Gambir, uh, this, in this long that's stents, do like. you like to inflate these stents for a little longer than these short stents? Because there's some data emerging that long stents need a little more time to optimally deploy rather than the shorter stents, maybe 30 seconds. I guess, Ajit, that would happen when uh, he's doing the polishing touches with a non-compliant. Uh, yeah, in fact, when I do the post dilatation, then I keep uh, in long sense the balloons little higher and uh, I think uh, the post dilatation would do the job. So now the next thing is we have to, we have to recross the uh, 
Dr. Gambhir, everybody is so involved in your case that so, uh, uh, can you get another wire, silent. please? Yeah. And watching the recross. <laughs> Okay, that's that's the most important challenge now. Give me a New York BMW van. Yeah, I think uh, all, amongst all okay. the steps. In the uh, meantime, what I can do is I can pull out the wire from the LED. Amongst all the steps, this is going to be the most important step. Uh, uh, let me try this if this wire. Uh, this wire has got lost its shape, so I can't do anything with this wire. Yeah, also at this stage, uh, maybe we should take a picture, make sure there is no dissection at the distal end of the LED stand before we withdraw the wire. In case if we are trying to switch the wires, I guess LED uh, distal end is uh, pretty safe. Uh, so which is this third wire that you are taking, Dr. Gambhir? And this is just a BMW wire. I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. If it doesn't go, then I might take something else. But uh, I think people variously take different kind of wires. Some people prefer hydrophilic wires. Uh, now that you have a stent in place, uh, the possibility of dissection is not going to be there. So I guess the hydrophilic wires are also good. Some people prefer a slight body to the. So the wire uh, is already in. Hydrophilic wire. That's great, Dr. Gambir. So, so we have put the wire and now the next step is of course to put the balloon. So we pull out the uh, previous wire from here. Okay, the hydrophilic wire is out. Give me a 1.5 millimeter or 1.25 millimeter balloon. Now there is, a, there is a little trick here. Let's first try if it goes or not. If it doesn't go, then we'll first fix up the LED stand nicely. The New York balloon. So generally, if the wire goes in um, so easily as uh, it went just now, I'm not taking away the credit from you, Dr. Gambir, in getting the wire in. But generally, if it goes so quickly, I guess uh, no, even no, no. the balloon you, you uh, tracks very easily across the uh, main, main branch stand. So maybe I would have just taken a 2-0 balloon. Yeah, I, I do agree with you that uh, I don't think it's, there is any credit. You think it's luck? Uh, if one, one can do it in the, in the, in the real-time practice, but since here yeah, the time is very short for the transmission, so I think I would not like to see it doesn't go. Yeah, you, you have about you see 10 minutes. One, one 1.25 balloon is not going. I think all of us understand that the final kiss is going to be an absolute must in this kind of deployment of the stand. You know, um, hopefully we are <laughs> able to get the Professor uh, Chen from Nanjing in China with his double kissing crush yeah. technique. Um, has some intriguing data. Um, using the same equipment, he kisses not just after both stents are in place, but after the first. So that helps to minimize this problem of having too much metal and having difficulty delivering the second balloon. Okay. So we change the brand of the balloon and go to yeah, that's one another way. And uh, you see, uh, the trick which I did was that yeah, I, I just pulled out the guiding, pulled out the balloon back into the guiding, and then pushed it again. So I think uh, by and large there is not much of problem. So we are now across the uh, crush next inflate. So it was the alignment of the wire in relation yeah. to the, the balloon uh, slipped a looks bit vessel way. wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that got altered once you withdraw the guide uh, catheter, okay. and uh, that's how the balloon has gone in. Hmm. 
Yeah, sometimes when it doesn't go, uh, the reason is the balloon starts hitting the proximal end of the stent in the main vessel. Then the uh, trick is that you uh, take a uh, optimal size balloon in the main vessel and give a high pressure dilatation over there so that the main vessel stent gets nicely fixed up. And then the side branch balloon generally goes. Now I am able to put it easily. So now I will take a 2 millimeter. Give See. me 2 millimeter balloon. So you are talking of something like proximal so optimization. I will take a 2 on this side and then 3 on the… Yeah. Give me 2 quickly. So this is 2 Oxford. So the proximal optimization would help you to get your wire into the side branch uh, and also the balloon into the side branch. So. It's a very important technique. Most of the time we need a shorter length balloon if you want to More do often uh, MS so. with for balloon. Yes. So now this is a 2 millimeter Oxford balloon and hopefully this goes. Yeah, that goes. This is the NC balloon. Okay. So this is not an NC balloon, so we'll just open up the strut here. And then take a 2.5 NC and down. You are very courageous to take an Oxford balloon three, in a NC. live. Both new. Ha ha ha. No, I think what, uh, what we do normally should be shown to people that yes, we can use Oxford balloons. Uh, since we have already dilated with a 1.5, so I was quite optimistic that Oxford would, uh, would go. Now I am going to take a 2.5 uh, NC balloon in the diagonal and 3 NC in the… This is 2.5. This is 2.5 NC which should go into the diagonal and give me a 3 millimeter please quickly also. The diameter of the LED stent is 3.5 or 3.0? No, the diameter was 3, but we have to expand it to 3.5. So, let's start from the distal end. Okay, go up fast. Fast, time come on. Go up fast. Okay, so we are fixing up post dilatation uh, with a 2.5, go to 20. And Dr. Kambir, can you ask them to go full screen on the image uh, because uh, we don't see much of the image, you know, it's 50-50 instead, they could make it 80-20. No, yeah, uh, who's on the, can you go full screen on the, for the fluoro? Down. That's nice, thank you. Up. Now give me a 3 millimeter balloon. Uh, are you getting it now full? Down. Yeah, but now it's better. So I will now take a 3 millimeter balloon and put it into the LED. Okay. So this is a 3 O balloon NC. Uh, what is the length of the balloon? 12 millimeter. Dr. Gambir, can they get you okay. in a small so corner start, on the side? Uh, giving high pressure inflation from the distal end. Yeah, please uh, put me into a small corner. Don't show me, put me into a small corner. Okay, up. Go to 20. Down. We still have to do I was at the end, go up, go to 25. This is 25 atmosphere, next, down. So now we would give a kiss here. Okay. Will these two balloons be good enough to stretch the back end of okay, the LED stand? Uh, and not use another three five ten for the proximal portion. Uh, yeah, I I may not. Yeah, down, both down. 
So do we use a strain boost at this stage? And the, uh, if required, we use it, but I think everything is visible otherwise also. Go up, we can see it nicely. Because this scent is so uh, nicely visible without even a boost. And then Dr. Gambir, why we are saying is uh, 13, uh, during 17. transmission we are losing out on some quality. Oh, that so we are not really able yeah. to see the stand. It would be interesting before you pull out the balloon to see the okay. stand boost. Okay. Down. Okay. Uh, we'll take a stand boost. Uh, injector will die. Boost. Hmm. Okay. Show them. Did you get it? Yeah. I think they will have to move the camera to the boost. We'll show you one more uh, view because... Uh. So let's do a quick IVOS now because that's important for us that whether we have to uh, further expand the LED stent or not. So one contrast image too, Dr. Gambir. Oh my God, wire came out. Yeah, I, pardon? Yeah. I think we, there is some intertwining of the wire and possibly the wire of the LED got pulled out. But nevertheless, let's be able to pull it out. Hmm. See, the balloon has pulled out the LED wire. There is some problem in the wire. It happens, Dr. Gambir, after you score a century. Anyhow, you let's know. first take a uh, cine. <laughs> let's take a, give me nitro, nitro. Now, it's important to see the proximal end of the LED stand because since we are given a high pressure inflation and we have not caused any dissection. Oh, how is the boost looking? Are we ready with the IOS? Okay. Yeah, just we'll take a shot and then give a boost, stand boost. Oh, yeah, Center balloon, is, balloon is out, I guess. Uh, so. Yeah. You won't get it. Yeah. I have to put a balloon. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. We, we pulled out the balloon inadvertently. I guess 38. The, uh, is what are your comments on the, uh, the cine pictures? So 38 is a little bit short on the diagonal. I think, Ajit, you are probably correct. But I wouldn't put another stent in the distal part of the diagonal. No, I, I, I don't think, I, I, no, 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 no. Uh, MS, I feel that, you see, it is, it is not the uh, lesion over there, but it is the mismatch now you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Gambier, are you going to show us a and final I think, IVIS? Uh, if you see, then there is some mismatch even in the LED also. Yeah. Um, Dr. Okay. Gambier, are you going Give to show a us a final IVIS? Because if you do, that'll be great. After which we can yeah, um, I'm just go to the next part of the program. Okay. Okay. Just give me a torker here. Torker. Let me just wire the. <coughs> okay. Give me the iOS now. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Let's go pull back earlier, huh? Okay, I'm going up with the IVUS catheter. Come nearer. Hmm. 
Easy comedy. Okay. So we are through. Let's start the pullback. And keep on showing the images simultaneously over there. Ask them to show the IBUS images now. Good. So obviously this is the distal vessel and we're doing pullback. You see the pericardial so stripe at 9, 10 o'clock. First thing we'll look for is transition from the distal vessel. Into the, now can we show the IBUS please? Thank you. First thing we look for is the transition from the distal vessel into the stent. Yeah, he's showing the IBUS. Are you getting that? Yeah, we are now. No, just have them make the IBIS full screen. Show IBIS on the full screen. Yeah. It's, thank you. Yeah, full so now, screen IBIS, yeah. Yeah, we've got okay. it. So now we're into the stent. And the number one thing that we look for is to make sure that the stent is fully expanded throughout its length. And you can see that the area is essentially the same, although we have yet to get to the area of this is probably the area of circumferential calcium. We just passed the diagonal branch at two o'clock. And now we're at the proximal edge or close to. I think. It looks fully expanded. Yeah, so it looks fully expanded over its length. But you have, yeah. when you're using very long stents, a focal area of underexpansion can be hidden. So that's why you just have to, you know, be patient and look at the entire stent. And that's so that was the diagonal right there. Sorry, at um, eight to nine o'clock. Now we're proximal to the bifurcation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This area needs a little work. Um, it's pretty good actually. A few struts proximally are not fully opposed, but I'm not sure that yeah. I would chase that very much. So I think it looks pretty good. So looking back, uh, Dr. Minz. Uh, what do you say about diagonal? Looks okay? Looks good, yes. No, this is 7th inch. This is 7th inch extra backup. And now you see the position of the LED stand looks fairly good. We are much proximal to the uh, point where the lesion is starting and we are much distal to the point where the lesion is ending. Okay. Is it agreeable to you, MS? Should I go ahead with the LED stent? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Down. Now you see the uh, stent has taken the curvatures of the LED very well. That's the beauty of the Promus Element stent. I think the other good thing about Promus Element under these kind of setting is going to be the radio opacity. Uh, I think amongst the uh, uh, high-end stents, uh, it yeah, perhaps that's, the uh, most radio extent. opaque stent. And uh, in bifurcation situation, you can yeah, yeah. position it very well. There's no doubt that that helps a lot the operator in, in deciding about, yeah. Let's take a shot here. Dr. Gambhir, uh, this, in this long That's stents, do like. you like to inflate these stents for a little longer than these short stents? Because there's some data emerging that long stents need a little more time to optimally deploy rather than the shorter stents, maybe 30 seconds. I guess, Ajit, that would happen when uh, he's doing the polishing touches with the non-compliant. Uh, yeah. In fact, when I do the post dilatation, then I keep uh, in long sense the balloons little higher and uh, I think uh, the post dilatation would do the job. So now the next thing is we have to, we have to recross the uh, Dr. Gambhir, everybody is so involved okay. in your case that so, uh, uh, can you get another wire, silent. please? Yeah. And watching the recross. <laughs> okay, that's that's the most important challenge now. Give me a New York BMW wire. Pass. 
Yeah, I think uh, all, amongst okay. all the steps… In the uh, meantime, what I can do is I can pull out the wire from the LED. Amongst all the steps, this is going to be the most important step. Uh, uh, let me try this if this wire… Uh, this wire has got lost its shape, so I can't do anything with this wire. Yeah, also at this stage, uh, maybe we should take a picture, make sure there is no dissection at the distal end of the LED stand before we withdraw the wire, in case if we are trying to switch the wires. I guess LED distal end is uh, pretty safe. Uh, so which is this third wire that you are taking, Dr. Gambhir? And this is just a BMW wire. I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. If it doesn't go, then I might take something else. But uh, I think people variously take different kind of wires. Some people prefer hydrophilic wires. Uh, now that you have a stent in place, uh, the possibility of dissection is not going to be there. So I guess uh, hydrophilic wires are also good. Some people prefer a slight body to the. So the wire uh, is already in. Hydrophilic wire. That's great, Dr. Gambhir. So, so we have put the wire and now the next step is of course to put the balloon. So we pull out the uh, previous wire from here. Okay, the hydrophilic wire is out. Give me 1.5 millimeter or 1.25 millimeter balloon. Now there is a, there is a little trick here. Let's first try if it goes or not. If it doesn't go, then we'll first fix up the LED stand nicely. The New York balloon. So generally, if the wire goes in um, so easily as uh, it went just now, I'm not taking away the credit from you, Dr. Gambhir, in getting the wire in, but generally if it goes so quickly, I guess uh, no, even no, no. the balloon you, you uh, tracks very easily across the uh, main, main branch stand. So maybe I would have just taken a 2-0 balloon. Yeah, I, I do agree with you that uh, I don't think it's, there is any credit. You think it's luck? Uh, if one, one can do it in the, in the, in the real-time practice, but since here yeah, the time is very short for the transmission, so I think I would not like to… See, it doesn't go. Yeah, you, you have about you see 10 minutes. one point two five balloon is not going. I think all of us understand that the final kiss is going to be an absolute must in this kind of deployment of the stand. You know, um, hopefully we are <laughs> able to get the professor uh, Chen from Nanjing in China with his double kissing crush yeah. technique um, has some intriguing data. Um, using the same equipment, he kisses not just after both stents are in place, but after the first. So that helps to minimize this problem of having too much metal and having difficulty delivering the second balloon. Okay. So we change the brand of the balloon and go to… Yeah, that's one another way and uh, you see uh, the trick which I did was that, yeah, I, I just pulled out the guiding, pulled out the balloon back into the guiding and then pushed it again. So I think uh, by and large there is not much of problem. So we are now across the uh, crush next inflate. So it was the alignment of the wire in relation yeah. to the, the balloon uh, slipped looks a vessel way. wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that got altered once you withdraw the guide uh, catheter, huh? and uh, that's how the balloon has gone in. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes when it doesn't go, uh, the reason is the balloon starts hitting the proximal end of the stent in the main vessel. Then the uh, trick is that you uh, take a uh, optimal size balloon in the main vessel and give a high pressure dilatation over there so that the main vessel stent gets nicely fixed up and then the side branch balloon generally goes. Now I am able to put it easily. So now I will take a 2 millimeter. 
Give me two minutes, Balloon. So you're talking of something like proximal so optimization. I'll take a two on this side, and then three on the. Yeah. Give me two quickly. So this is two Oxford. So the proximal optimization would help you to get your wire into the side branch, uh, and also the balloon into the side branch. So. It's a very important technique. Most of the time, we need a short length balloon if you want to More do More often, uh, so. MS with for balloon. Yes. So now this is a two millimeter Oxford balloon, and hopefully this goes. Yeah, that goes. This is an NC balloon. Okay. So this is not an NC balloon. So we'll just open up the strut here, and then take a two point five NC, and down. You are very courageous to take an Oxford balloon three, in a live. And give me three and see. Both new. Ha ha ha. No, I think what, uh, what we do normally it should be shown to people that yes, we can use Oxford balloons. Uh, since we have already dilated with a 1.5, so I was quite optimistic that Oxford would, uh, would go. Now I'm going to take a 2.5 uh, NC balloon in the diagonal and 3 NC in the this 2.5. This is 2.5 NC, which should go into the diagonal and give me a 3 millimeter, please, quickly also. The diameter of the LED stent is 3.5 or 3.0. No, the diameter was 3, but we have to expand it to 3.5. So, let's start from the distal end. Okay, go up fast. Fast, time come on. Go up fast. Okay, so we are fixing up post dilatation uh, with a 2.5, go to 20. And Dr. Kambir, can you ask them to go full screen on the image uh, because uh, we don't see much of the image, you know, it's 50-50 instead, they could make it 80-20. No, yeah, uh, who's on the, can you go full screen on the, for the fluoro? Down. That's nice, thank you. Up. Now give me a 3 millimeter balloon. Uh, are you getting it now full? Down. Yeah, but now it's better. So I will now take a 3 minute balloon and put it into the LED. Okay. So this is a 3 O balloon NC. Uh, what is the length of the balloon? 12 millimeter. Dr. Gambir, can they get you in okay. a small so we corner start, on the side? Uh, giving high pressure inflation from the distal end. Yeah, please uh, put me into a small corner. Don't show me, put me into a small corner. Okay, up. Go to 20. Down. We still have to do I was at the end, go up, go to 25, this is 25 atmosphere, next, down. So now we would give a kiss here, okay. Will these two balloons be good enough to stretch the back end of okay, the LED up. stand? Uh, and not use another three five stent for the proximal portion. Uh, yeah, I I may not. Yeah, down, both down. So do we use a stent boost at this stage? And the, uh, if required, we use it. But I think everything is visible. Otherwise, also go up. We can see it nicely. Because this scent is so uh, nicely visible without even a boost. And then Dr. Gambir, why we are saying is uh, 13, uh, during transmission 17. we are losing out on some quality. Oh, that 
So we are not really able yeah. to see the stand. It would be interesting before you pull out the balloon to see the okay. stand boost. Okay. Down. Okay. Uh, we'll take a stand boost. Uh, injector will die. Boost. Hmm. Okay. Show them. Did you get it? Yeah. I think they will have to move the camera to the boost. We'll show you one more uh, view because. Uh. So let's do a quick IVOS now because that's important for us that whether we have to uh, further expand the LED stent or not. So one contrast image too, Dr. Gambhir. Oh my god, wire came out. Yeah, I, pardon? Yeah. I think we, there is some intertwining of the wire and possibly the wire at the LED got pulled out. But never the mess, let's be able to pull it out. Hmm. See, the balloon has pulled out the LED wire. There is some problem in the wire. It happens, Dr. Gambhir, after you score a century. Anyhow, you let's know. first take a uh, cine. <laughs> Let's take a, give me nitro, nitro. Now, it's important to see the proximal end of the LED stand because since we are given a high pressure inflation and we have not caused any dissection. Oh, how is the boost looking? Are you ready with IOS? Okay. Yeah, just we'll take a shot and then give a boost, stand boost. Oh, yeah, balloon, is, balloon is out, I guess. Uh, so. Yeah. You won't get it. Yeah. I have to put a balloon. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, we pulled out the balloon inadvertently. I guess 38. The, uh, is what are your comments on the, uh, the cine pictures? So 38 is a little bit short on the diagonal. I think, Ajit, you are probably correct. But I wouldn't put another stent in the distal part of the diagonal. No, I, I, I don't think… I, I, no, 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 no. Uh, MS, I feel that… You see, it is, it is not the uh, lesion over there, but it is the mismatch now you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Gambier, are you going to show us a and final I think, uh, IVIS? If you see, then there is some mismatch even in the LED also. Yeah. Um, Dr. Okay. Gambier, are you going Give to show a us a final IVIS? Because if you do, that'll be great, after which we can yeah, um, I'm just go to the next part of the program. Okay. Okay, just give me a torker here. Torker. Let me just wire the... <coughs> okay. Give me the IVIS now. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Usko pull back early, huh? Okay, I'm going up with the IVUS catheter. Come nearer. Okay, so we are through. Let's start the pullback. And keep on showing the images simultaneously over there. Ask them to show the IBUS images now. Good. So obviously this is the distal vessel. 
and we're doing pullback. You see the pericardial so, stripe at 9, 10 o'clock. First thing we'll look for is transition from the distal vessel. Into the, now, can we show the IVUS, please? Thank you. First thing we look for is the transition from the distal vessel into the stent. Yeah, he's showing the IVUS. Are you getting that? Yeah, we are now. No, just have them make the IVUS full screen. Show IVUS on the full screen. Yeah. It's, thank you. Yeah, full so screen now, IVUS, yeah. Yeah, we've That's got okay. it. So now we're into the stent. And the number one thing that we look for is to make sure that the stent is fully expanded throughout its length. And you can see that the area is essentially the same, although we have yet to get to the area of, this is probably the area of circumferential calcium. We just passed the diagonal branch at two o'clock. And now we're at the proximal edge or close to. Think. Looks fully expanded. Yeah, so it looks fully expanded over its length. But you have, yeah. when you're using very long stents, a focal area of underexpansion can be hidden. So that's why you just have to, you know, be patient and look at the entire stent. And that's so that was the diagonal right there. Sorry, at um, eight to nine o'clock. Now we're proximal to the bifurcation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This area needs a little work. Um, it's pretty good, actually. A few struts proximally yeah, are not yeah. fully opposed, but I'm not sure that yeah. I would chase that very much. So I think it looks pretty good. So looking back, uh, Dr. Minz, uh, so, uh, 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 should we change our approach uh, based on the calcium we saw? Because here, Dr. Gambir did a very conventional balloon stain yeah. strategy despite the calcification. Well, I mean, again, um, as I said, the, the calcium was circumferential, but it was short. You have no idea how thick it is. So the issue is probabilities. You can do three things. You can do balloon predilation, but make sure the predilating balloon is properly sized and fully expanded, and that's what he did. You can do cutting balloon, scoring balloon. Um, he kind of did a poor man's cutting balloon, scoring balloon, because he had a buddy, he had a second wire in the diagonal, or third, you do rotational atherectomy. There's no way to predict absolutely whether the stent will or will not fully expand when you have circumferential calcium. What went in favor of a more conservative, less aggressive approach was that it was short. But um, with your experience uh, in this particular case, uh, would you have suggested uh, going beyond the balloon alone? No, I said again, there are three approaches and people can have their choices. You can. We probably would have used a scoring or a cutting balloon. That's probably the intermediate approach that is a little more aggressive in terms of guaranteeing expansion compared to conventional balloon alone, and obviously less problematic than doing rotational atherectomy, particularly in this lesion subset, as you pointed out. Um, but the key is to make sure that before you put a stent into a lesion with circumferential calcium, that you can fully expand that. That's the key. Because if you can fully expand a balloon, you can probably fully expand a stent. If you only get almost full expansion of a balloon angiographically, the likelihood is that the actual balloon expansion is less and you'll have trouble expanding the stent. Plus, he went to 24 atmospheres, which was really aggressive in this lesion. So his approach is perfectly reasonable. The key was to make sure that he could fully expand the stent. Actually, since we had two wires and we had already dilated the diagonal before we did an IVUS, uh, I think rotablator as an option was almost ruled out, especially because there was a dissection in the yeah. diagonal vessel. So I was actually looking back, Dr. Gambir, I don't know whether you would agree that uh, we should have wired LED, done the IVUS first, looked at the calcium. If there was lots of calcium which required rota, maybe rota the LAD, maybe stain the LAD, and then through the stain we could have accessed the diagonal and put one more stain into diagonal. How about it, uh, Dr. Gambir? Yeah. 
with these sort of outcomes on the yeah. IVERS and the uh, uh, MS, uh, I would make uh, uh, two comments on two two comments on what you said. Yes, I think we could have done the IVERS uh, of the LED and then possibly looked at the extent of calcium in the LED and then decided the strategy. But then I am absolutely convinced that uh, I mean in retrospect I am looking at it and I am I am confirmed of what I thought that the uh, calcium is only a focal and such a focal calcium you don't need a rota. I am convinced about that that you don't need a rota for such a focal calcium which is more of uh, sub-intimal uh, although it's circumferential so I think uh, I, I was pretty sure that this should expand with a balloon or we could go with a cutting balloon or a uh, you know a full expansion of the balloon um, I am concerned about the diagonal as much as about LED because it's to my mind it is a big size diagonal so I think what approach I did was possibly uh, keeping in mind the diagonal and I avoided rota because I thought it was a focal uh, calcification and diagonal is equally important and possibly it would be impossible to do diagonal uh, wire in with a rota or I might have even included a diagonal while I was doing a rota of the LED. So that is what was going in my mind. Okay. So thank you Dr. Gambier very much. It was a great case. We must end the session to go to the next session thank you. so that we can be thank on you. time for the transmission from Milan.